Are you as underwhelmed as some investors are today? Mm -hmm. Not really. I would say you have to look at it from kind of a big picture perspective. To start the year, Netflix had more of a 30% move heading into earnings. You had expectations very high into the print in the wake of the recent price increase the other day. So Netflix really had to blow, blow numbers out across the board, sub upside, margin upside. You did have sub upside, margins were a little bit light in Q1. That was mainly a function of FX. So we think this is really a transitory phasing issue. We're starting to get a little bit more information from Netflix, and we'll have to trust them on this about subscribers, viewers, you know, Bird Box, 80 million viewers, uh, they told us on the call. Uh, take a listen to what Reed Hastings had to say about just how much share of the, the broader TV market they're snagging. Take a listen. There's a billion hours of television uh, content being consumed a day. We're winning about 10% of it. And so that's why, like Disney, uh, they have great content. We're excited for their launch. Um, and, you know, maybe they grow over a couple of years to 50 million hours a day. Um, but that's out of the billion. Anusha, we've talked to a lot of analysts on the show who are pessimistic about Netflix's future, given that companies like Disney are pulling their content, you know, you know, will prove to be more competitive in the future. But, you know, in talking to the creators in Hollywood, most of them are still in awe of Netflix and don't seem to think there's much of a problem at all. What is the prevailing view there? Well, you're, you're right. And there, there is reason to be concerned if uh, you're Netflix. And uh, because Disney, AT&T, Comcast, uh, they're all coming online in the next eight, 12 to 18 months with rival streaming channels. And they are creating a moat of exclusivity around their own content. Um, and we will see, and there are already numbers coming out about how much we will see the cost of content and the investment uh, in content balloon for the uh, media industry. Um, and but Netflix, you know, if you've listened to Ted Sarandos and Reid over the past couple of years, have talked about um, this threat. You know, so to give them credit, they have been preparing for that. And on their uh, sort of video call yesterday, they did talk about how, um, you know, a vast majority of their content that is watched, um, I'm probably not phrasing that correctly, but like the most watched content is their original stuff. So whilst the majority, you know, the, they have friends and they have a ton of stuff on there, what people are watching is original. And that's what we're all talking talking about we're talking about bird box and we're talking about you know um, you and, and other shows so they have been very good at, uh, at getting getting original content to keep us entertained um, the big question is is that as there's like a sort of plethora of these of these streaming um, entities uh, how are they going to survive where are they going to find their niece to answer just your direct question about uh, creators they're just happy to sell their stuff let's just be real you know they're just happy to get their stuff sold and be seen um, you know it's very interesting to see someone like Alfonso Cuaron who has Roma which is the film that is on Netflix now which is really a kind of odds on favorite to win best picture next month it's going to be a real important moment for Netflix if they win or even come close to winning um, because, you know, that's, it's just a watershed moment. They've never been close to that before. So right. um, took home some yeah. Golden Globes and a favorite at the Oscars. Um, Justin, you were nodding, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as Anusha was talking there. Um, I've got this chart in my Bloomberg showing the uh, how the rise in subscribers has actually generally mirrored the rise in the stock. So do you think going forward investors are going to be okay with strong subscriber growth even if revenue doesn't necessarily keep pace with expectations. Yeah, I think the revenue piece solves itself because to the earlier point, Netflix has the viewership. It has nearly 140 million subscribers uh, around the world. We think that number is 200 million by 2020. And when you go back to the creator problem, Netflix solves distribution, it solves discovery. It can make these programs available at a mass market way, whereas, say, Disney, Comcast, starting today with a new streaming service, they have to build up that global distribution. So from a Netflix perspective, it's already solved the tough piece. It has the audience. Adding a dollar or two a year in pricing, that's how you get to long-term free cash flow growth. Anusha, you know, uh, what's the word on, 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 on the content that Disney and some of these competitors were, will offer? I mean, do we know if it's going to be, if it's going to be spectacular? I mean, we know that they are 
you know, the, the, the properties that we're talking about are Disney's like Marvel and Star Wars. Um, that, uh, for example, with, with the Lucasfilm properties, you know, uh, Netflix has that for this year and then it comes off. Um, I don't think that that's that important for Netflix, you know, like that's not how this business work, uh, works. And I, I think it's kind of a super interesting point because say, for example, around Bird Box, and maybe this is difficult to express, but people talked a lot about the fact that, a lot of analysts talked about the fact that, you know, uh, a lot of people saw it, 40 million, 80 million households saw it, and what that translated to in terms of box office. But I think fundamentally we're talking about different businesses. People sitting at home and streaming Bird Box is different to Disney getting people into theaters to see Star Wars. Now, they will have uh, potentially three more Star Wars movies and a whole other world of Star Wars spin offs that they're already working on. You know, they, they have all the Marvel content that they will um, have coming onto their platforms, and they're very focused on content that not only gets people onto their streaming platforms, but that can be monetized through theatrical, that can be monetized through products, that can be monetized through DVDs, television, right. and other profit streams. Netflix is not interested in that. Although they do Justin. sell t-shirts, so I don't know. <laughs> Justin, quick last word. Of course. I completely agree with that view right there. I think. Netflix will be competing in a different area than Disney. Uh, the films that were just named right there, Star Wars, Marvel, those are all big budget pictures. Bird Box, not that expensive to make. There's a lot more Bird Boxes in the world than Disney's, Disney type films, and that gives Netflix a lot of content it can buy.